We will start this. So we can co opt our school board meeting on at uh, 641. It's December 20th. Um, the first thing we'll do is ask for any public input. Is there anybody who would like to have public input before we see if there's anyone online? I don't know where. Sorry, we got started a little late. So nobody right now? Um, we have one person online, but there's no hand up. <laughs> No hand up. If they have would like to speak, they can raise their hand. We'll make sure they get promoted. All right, thank you. Is it Paul? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, we will keep public input open and revisit at the end of the meeting. Um, so I am going to change up the order of this. Um, agenda because the one thing we did not get to do was have an actual workshop and so I kind of alerted everybody to the fact that I kind of wanted to talk about if there's any feedback from the budget I passed along all of your the so we can finance committee's review reports to the rest of the board so they had a chance to read it so thank you very much for work on that and really do appreciate it um, but I just want to if there's any feedback um, anything you want to review is there I don't know if there's Jeannie if you have a way you'd want to Go down this. Um, do they have their? Well, they probably we probably have to turn the push the button on the bottom or underneath. Or you just take it from the top. Yeah. There you go. How many finance go. committee it's members it's does it take to turn on a microphone? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I've, I've been here before. <laughs> Uh, uh, <clears throat> since the last meeting we have, I have not um, heard any um, questions that have come forth. So, um, and I believe that all of the questions, maybe we should ask everybody that question. If all of your questions have been answered um, that were submitted to the page. Mm -hmm. All of my questions have been answered. Yes, mine as well. Yeah. So I, I think we're I think we're in a good place. Um, we're anxious to hear about the TPC agreement. Yeah. But um, beyond that, I think unless somebody, um, Mark, if no. anybody else has something that that is burning, I think we're we're in good shape. All right. Can I just ask if there's any board members who have any questions to the Sohegan Finance Committee before we move on? Yeah, Robert. I have one. Um, in our curriculum budget. We are have an investment of forty thousand dollars to improve our CTE program, and I didn't see CTE discussed in your curriculum um, report. Report. So I was curious to know what the committee thought about that investment. I'm going to have to go back and look at my notes and compare back to the budget. So I'll look at that now. Okay, great. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Anything else? Because I think the budget has been fairly stable and not too many changes. And I know I attended your meetings either in person or on the on phone a couple of times. So I appreciate all of your discussion, which has been helpful. Um, all right. So if not there's nothing else. I'm going to move forward with the PPC and I'm actually going to pass this out. Pass one up, one to Mark and then pass them that way. So what I'm passing out is a frequently asked question that basically will summarize the PPC agreement that we've come to. And we'll go through each of the items one by one and have a discussion on them. Um, and we have um, we do, we were just reviewing it ourselves, and I'm also waiting for Anna. She will be calling in in a little bit, um, around seven o'clock, where we'll be able to take more a vote on moving this to public hearing. And I want to have your feedback on this as well. Um, but we can go down each of these items one by one as you read through them. So. 
what I might do is just read so read a little bit of this so everyone can hear it because I know we have people in the public who uh, do not have this handout uh, uh, in their hands right now, but they will be it will be put on the SAU site um, after tonight, so the public has a chance to review it as well. So the the first point is how are negotiations different from districts where teachers have formed a union? As you know, we are not a union here. Um, so unionized districts are focused around a collective bargaining agreement. And in Sohegan, the teachers and the board's negotiations result in policy changes. It is not a contract in the same form as a collective bargaining agreement. Um, and the compensation is covered by policy GCBA. And the, the policy covers uh, the professional staff and support staff. So you can think of it as the teachers, the um, the counselors, social workers, library media specialists, nurses, paraprofessionals, um, the special ed staff, facilities, pretty much everybody except for administration is, in, is under this. Um, some of the things that we focused on in this negotiation, uh, we were looking to increase instructional time ensure compensation level working conditions would continue to attract and retain professional and support staff and review the cost of the current salary schedule with health insurance offerings. So how did we address these? Uh, instructional time, uh, the board and with PPC, we agreed to four additional ins instruction days and one professional development day to be added within the three-year contract. So the first year we're going to have one additional education day and one professional development day. The second year of the contract will have two education days and the third day, third year will be another um, instructional day. So we'll have a total of five additional days at the end of the contract. The, uh, our teach, teacher load, we're gonna keep it the same where there's uh, four courses, one semester, five courses, another semester. We eliminated the stipend for carrying four unique classes. And there is a modest increase in the salary. And to discuss that, um, I would say, I will tell you, let me see how we have ordered this. So this, the salary we capped at um, a 3.3% increase each year, which we'll review that in a moment. Um, we did cap the career growth and the salary schedule. So it no longer continues to grow indefinitely. So we've agreed to cap it. Um, I don't remember exactly where it falls out, around Z. Yeah, yeah. I think it's around Z. Um, so <laughs> good question. So <laughs> how, how the uh, salary schedule works, there's, um, a, and you, I might need help explaining this one because you probably know how to explain it better than I do, but it has to do with number of credits, number of years worked. And also we have what we call career growth. You can do course courses that can help you progress on the salary schedule. Uh, like career growth will give you three steps on the salary schedule. So depending how many times you do that, you can keep growing up on the grow, growing in the salary schedule. So we start, you know, you can have A, one, and then depending on the number of credits you get, you can keep progressing over B, C, D, and then you have the number of years. Right now it grows out to A, E, but we've stopped it and there will be no more in the indefinite growth. So we've... We've capped that. Capped it at Z. So there, I mean, to reach where Z kind of falls out is about six career growths. Yeah. So every career growth takes about three years. So you're talking about 18 years worth of teaching. On top of they can still take courses, they can still take professional development, all those things can still help them grow. So there's, we're not stopping the learning, we're just stopping the indefinite growth of the salary schedule. Yeah. And <clears throat> you can't do career growth consecutively, so you have to take a year off. So you take a year off, 
you know, and you do six career grows, you know, you got 24, right. 24 years. And that's a, that's a career for some. And you can't, uh, the first year you can do career growth is year five. So we're talking 29 years of the wonderful incentive that makes this place what it is. So you're 57 ish. By then we're probably okay. Yeah. So there's still lots of room to grow. Yes. Just putting some parameters around it. Um, health insurance. So uh, as some of us know, the HMO plan is the most expensive plan that is on that is available. And we are sunsetting that. So as of June 30th, no new employees would be able to join this plan. Um, on top of that, the employee share will increase. So the, um, and, and you can see it under six, um, the changes. So currently in a single person on the HMO, the, the employer, so we pay 90%. It is going to move to 85, 83, and 80. So the employee is going to be picking up more costs, but we're going to be teaching and giving them more information about the other plans that are available that include an HRA and an HSA. So there's going to be a lot of educational work to try and move people over to the other plans. Um, top of my head, I don't know what their percentage are that they pay. I could look up on the. Um, he, so Higgin would be very much, this would be a lead in the community side. Yeah. That's why I wondered if mm -hmm. coming to trend that way. Yeah. Yeah, this, this so he would lead the way for a share of the most expensive. And then I don't see anybody here that was here back when we did this last contract. Mm -hmm. uh, at, this is a straight 3.3% for the next three years. Mm -hmm. And before when we did it, it was increasing every year. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't remember what the increases were. Did they figure this was going to be more beneficial to everybody? to do a straight 3.3? 3. Um, I don't know if that was actually looking at say it was beneficial. I think we were looking at since we were adding two days on the first year of the contract, two days the second year of the contract, and one day the, the third year, we were trying to just say, you know, where are we putting the payments for adding extra days? But looking at the 0.54% falls into that as well. As right. you saw, we're adding that 0.54 to the 403B to help offset some of that additional days right um so yeah so it wasn't looked at as number of days and adding a higher raise one year versus another everyone seemed content with keeping it straight across um so yeah so going to, back to the point five four that's for the the uh professional staff or what we call basically the teachers the support staff, the paras, the um, by the, the uh, facilities folks, those sorts of supporting roles, they're they're only going to receive a 0.27% in uh, additional amount to their retirement savings for the additional days. Any questions on those? Those the a lot of changes. Um, the other thing we looked at was the retiree um, payment. So as the contract reads now, the retiring staff reads uh, a partial payment in their last year of teaching and then an additional payment at the year of retirement. Um, this amount has not changed for the high school for about 15 years from what we understand. So we did agree to um, a slight increase. So overall, there'd be an additional 4,000 payment to the teachers and 2,000 payment to the support staff as a retirement payment. Um, 
And then the last grouping on number eight, uh, some of the agreements that we have is gives the superintendent some flexibility in hiring. So yeah. where there's a critical shortage area that's noted by the state, um, the superintendent will have the ability to place a potential hire up to three steps higher on the salary schedule than what they might land at based on their like master's third. I was trying to call. Why is it going to? I'm trying to get Anna in here. Hi. Hi. All right. I'm going to put you up here. Um, I just want everyone to know that Anna Goulet Zimmerman is joining our meeting um, at, on the phone. So, Anna, I just want to ask um, is it impossible for you to be here and are you alone? It is impossible for me to be there. I am not alone, but I have you on my headset so no one else can hear me or what's being said. And if we get to a critical vote or comment, I can move somewhere temporarily where I'm going to. Well, it's a public meeting, so it's not a problem. We just, okay. So we're just going down the the higher, the um, PPC agreement and on number eight. Um, so the flexibility in hiring, I was just discussing that the superintendent has the ability to add uh, a, and a potential hire and up to an additional three steps if needed to make sure we're competitive with surrounding towns. Um, but the, that position does need to be on the critical shortage area that the state lists. Um, so currently the contract says nothing. So the superintendent did not have that ability to do that. Um, we did agree to the support staff currently does not come to any of the retreat days. So we did agree that they could come back to one retreat day, which is would probably be the first day, which is the day that really brings the staff together and they talk about what the what's going to happen this year, trying to get you know collaboration going and things like that. So it'll make them feel part of the staff and part of the the entire group. Where currently they don't have the ability to come to that first day. Um, so we did agree to that. The tutor role we talked about this in our budget that we wanted to make sure that the PPC agreed to it. There is a tutor in our learning commons that uh, currently is being funded through ESSER funds, but that runs out this year. So we are they uh, we just wanted to make sure they were in agreement that there would be a tutor role because that role does not currently exist on the PPC schedule. So that was agreed to. Um, also a classroom assistant. And again, this one was discussed during the budget. And uh, the classroom assistant would take the place in a like a, a non-credit bearing Sabre Flex class and allows the credentialed teacher to go actually be in a classroom and teach students. So we want the ability to get that teacher back in the classroom versus sitting in a, in a Sabre Flex. And we also agreed that we would pay an additional $2 per hour to that role because they would be managing a classroom full of students and emotions and we know how that works. So we wanna make sure that we have the right person hired for that role. Um, so have, they, yes. have they figured out what the increase of the budget was going to be for number eight for all of them? Yeah, we did. And I don't, mm -hmm, let me see if I have. For which one? The well, tutor role and the classroom assistant. Amy, do you have the. So um, the tutor role, the uh, tutor role is a $50. Currently it's, it's uh, paid at $50 an hour. And currently I think it's six hours. I have to look exactly how many hours a week. So we have a tutor um, that paid for a grant that's coming off a grant. Um, the classroom assistant, $2 an hour, that's about $2,600. They work about $1,300 $1, hours a year. So it's about $2,600 for that position. Um, the flexibility in hiring, a step is about, a, so it could be hiring someone at 
you know, uh, with five years experience, you put my eight years experience, and that could be about twenty eight hundred bucks, three thousand bucks more. I mean, so the Sauhegan salary schedule, if you haven't seen it, it's unique. It's the most unique salary schedule I've ever seen. Um, but it's heavy weighted for to like H through Z, or actually like L through Z, because it's lanes and each lane, and it has thirty one lanes, where most districts have about eight or nine lanes. And this is 31 lanes. So as, as Jeannie's point, if you are heavily invested in the career growth process, you can get to AE, uh, which is very lucrative. It's over 100. It's going to be soon to be $100,000 position. But when you hire someone, they haven't had the experience of career growth. They've had a, typically a traditional approach to salary placement. So you hire someone at G, master's plus 30, right. because it's 10 credits a lane when you get to G, depending on your master's high credit. So say it's G. While G to step 18 is $77,000, where at Bedford it's 84 and Hollis Brooklyn is 86. Amy was here, I'm an ish person. Everybody knows I'm an ish. Don't hold me if I'm on, but I'm within a few grand there off the top of my head. So um, that's why we may have to bump somebody because they they might get an offer at, at Hollis Brookline for 62 and we'd be 58. Mike can go now to 62. Now we do have one of the most important things for the teachers we want to hire, and that is the working condition of four classes, one semester, five and there. That's the greatest thing to support high quality instruction anywhere in New Hampshire. So for most people, that is the draw, but some young person, you know, single, or I'm sorry, one person, little child, they, they get to put food on the table, right? So you want to be, some of them might, you know, if it's $5,000, I'm going to go to Bedford. But if it's $2,000, $3,000, I'm going to take the four and a half thousand. It, it, it gives us a little bit more power. We don't know how much that would cost, but about three grand a half if we have to. Does that help? Mm -hmm. Answer the question, is that okay? Can, can I ask uh, what what's happening to the ESSR funds? They run out. They've been spent. <clears throat> They've been spent. Those are the, uh, that was COVID. Okay. COVID. Yeah. COVID. So we're finished. I mean, there's, there's, a, you know, negligible amount left that we will spend, but not enough to cover this. Okay. Yeah, good questions. Any other questions on those parts? Oh, we, we haven't got yeah. to that part yet. The the tax impact of the yes, and the, yeah, and I'm going to do that. It, it, the retirement. I just one last thing on there, and this is I, currently the teachers who want to retire don't need to tell us until January first. We've asked them to move that to November first because um, it helps us with our budgeting. Um, there will be a caveat that we could extend it as a board up to thirty days, um, but we're trying to get the teachers to move to an earlier decision process. Um, Is there a help. limit on the number who can retire? No. An entitlement? Okay. Any okay. teacher who requests is entitled to receive. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so then the last part is the uh, cost to the warrant. Um, the first year would be $439,838. The second year would be $432,555. And the third year of the contract would be $439,305. That's where we are. And and do we know what that translates into tax impact for I yeah, and I, I apologize. We, we will put that on when we revise this. We can put that on there. Okay. Um, back of the envelope, three hundred. Let's say, don't hold me to it. Twelve cents for Amherst. Thirty-three cents. Come on, Bernie. I'm just going by six hundred twenty-four thousand dollars is twenty-six twenty-six cents for Amherst, and two hundred twenty-nine thousand dollars was sixty-nine cents. So ish 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 with a with a distribution of the, the we'll apportionment. Get, we will get that information. <laughs> okay, we'll put it on there before we get this out. That's Thank a great you. idea. We'll Thank have you. Amy figure it out tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. She doesn't Thank like you. issues. No, Amy doesn't like issues. <laughs> she cringes when there's an ish. Yes. <laughs> so questions, discussion. I think is yes.
the number of students they would face that's all gone correct that's yeah. part of the that's part of the um keeping the four or five but ha getting rid of the like the unique preps and those things that is out of the contract there's no mandate yeah so the, the we took a really hard look at the four and a half months. um that is a premium this community is investing extraordinarily in the, in the faculty to deliver on high quality instruction, providing more planning time and collaboration time than comp school districts in New Hampshire, if not more. So there was also connected to their teaching assignment was some additional benefits. One of which that depending on the number of students you had, you actually received days outside of the classroom. You could take additional days to to leave to to plan which is more sub time and less instructional time from your teacher and we struggle with it and there was also if you had four unique preps there was a a um, uh, an additional percentage i think it was 10% mm -hmm. of your salary you received for taking on additional preps even in a 4 or 5 environment so realizing that the community placed an extraordinarily investment, we worked with PPC to eliminate those extra benefits for really what is the most extraordinary teaching load of any public school in New Hampshire. And they understood that um, to support a true, and I'm gonna say it really is, when I got here, this is one of the things that drew me here, was the shot to have high quality instruction because no duties, no uh, a reduced teaching load. And I worked in an environment where teachers were doing lunch duty and teachers were teaching five every day. So, you know, uh, five of their uh, year. And it was hard. One of the biggest barriers to high quality instruction in many schools is time. And teachers are working very, very hard, but you're still bogged down because an hour and a half of your day you're doing lunch duty and you're teaching an extra class at the double. So to maintain that, and it's in the teacher's interest, it's our interest, protect and retain. We eliminated the extra, extra, extra benefits to streamline and just focus on this, and they understood that. So are there any teachers that are doing more than four and a half now? So uh, if we need, so there's, the, the regular teaching load is four, one semester, five and up. But if you take it, if you teach a class beyond that, you do get extra compensation, that doesn't change. Before it was the distribution of your courses, so if you taught four different courses, you get an extra bump. Yeah, I believe three years ago when I was on the board, there was only one or two people that were getting that benefit. That's yes, about, that's there, about true. Are there more now or less? We had, because of extenuating circumstances in 2020, 21, 22, uh, with, you know, courses running differently, we had a, a, more than we wanted to. You know, we had some movement and a lot of transition. If, you know, board members can recall people going in and people coming out, not just in regular retirements, but mid-year because of illness or family things that required us to have people in the middle of the year take on more responsibility. Uh, I think that's just a credit to the, the volatility of education at the time in, in, in people's personal lives. And uh, But to my knowledge, you know, it, it's like one or two is historically what it's been, and that's where we're at right now. So is is the half for advisory? Is that is that mm -hmm. what that covers? Mm -hmm. And I assume there's been an attempt to um, uh, make sure that um, there's high quality things happening in advisory. Yes, that was revisited this year, especially, and there's been a lot of rework to advisory. Is what we were told. Yes. Yeah, there was some changes in about the direction of advisory. The advisory coordinators in partnership with the dean of students dean of faculty and principal um because as as you know as long-standing community member sohegan you know uh person affiliated with sohegan not all advisories co are created equal right right and and so we're trying to create a more of an equitable experience on on the activities and things that are done and uh advisories a real difficult thing to do in a real equitable manner. And so there's been concerted efforts to meet students uh, where they're at and meet their needs with the current needs of 22, 23 students right now. And uh, 
And advisory is a big part. It's a big commitment. You know, mm -hmm. you know, this place shuts down for 11, 15 to 12, 15 lunch and advisory, you know, it's, and so mm -hmm. uh, we're trying to get better at that. And, and that's, you know, one of the things when you ask teachers to do others, right. Advisory exhibition, senior project, the four point five and five is, you know, a good thing to put effort into those other things. But then there's a lot of compensation, you know, um, in time. So if I'm a teacher first semester, keep in mind, like, I could teach four classes, right? But then I have advisory. I still have three periods off and then three to 3.30 to do the collaboration and planning. So it's still a very good, you know, um, working environment for teachers here as it's always been, but as Steve mentioned, it's our, our, it's our strongest retention and attraction tool that we have. And that's what sets us mm -hmm. apart from people that we comp with so I just want to make sure that we're um, giving um, especially new teachers um, training and advisory um, and yeah that's support. a big part of the onboarding and retreat and there's a mentor program that we're set up to yep. that new teachers all are matched right. up and with uh, experienced teachers to help with the culture help with advisory help with creating systems help with classroom management in just introduction to cohesion. That's good to hear. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep. All right. What else? Other questions? No? Um, okay. So the one thing that we need to do as a board is we need to um, vote on ratifying the tentative agreement and then and send it to the public hearing. Um, and then you guys can meet and have your vote on supporting the agreement or not. Oh, I think I just lost Anna. Yes. I want her around for the vote. Hi. I don't okay. Know. Yes. So um, what I'd like to do is, is, um, have a motion, take a motion to uh, ratify the tentative agreement and send it to public hearing Let's do it. That's cool. on the board. Yeah. It's up there. Whoops, that's not it. That's nope, there it is. So I can read it. So Anna, the um, article three for the PPC agreement would say, shall the Sohegan Cooperative School District vote to approve the cost included in the agreement between the Sohegan Cooperative School Board and the professional and support staff of the Sohegan Cooperative High School, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at current staffing levels. In the fiscal year 24-25, the estimated increase would be 439-838. In fiscal year 2025-2026, we be $432,555,000. In fiscal year 2026 and 2027, would be four hundred thirty-nine thousand three hundred five dollars. And further, to raise and appropriate the sum of four thirty four hundred thirty-nine thousand eight thirty-eight for the 2024-2025 fiscal year, each such sum representing the additional cost attributable to the increase in salaries and benefits over those that would be payable at current staffing levels. Uh, we'll take out the word cooperative. So we can, so we can high school, so we can cooperative. I was going to ask about that. that was like yeah. About some months ago. And DRA um, reviewed this and DRA helped write this. And so we'll make sure. We so, okay. Thank you. Okay. Is that in the question? Yeah. In the question mark. Yeah. Got to. <laughs> Why are they going to take out cooperative? I don't know. Why are you taking out cooperative? It's uh, cause it's so we can high school. Not so we can it's so we can cooperative. The school, school district. Cooperative. The school is not. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It used to be. It used to be. This the high school, cooperative high school, school, but there's a cooperative school district. Hmm. Interesting, huh? <laughs> I remember, I've been told that it's always Sohegan High School. Wrong. Does somebody have a document that can settle this? Because it does I mean, float around. Because on the entry into the place, it says Sohegan High School. Well. So, I think so, so we really so we can talk we about will it. you know more you you are the research. right That's already I think I want to say Jeannie's right I've always seen so he can cooperative we probably have paperwork but <laughs> I do right I, I, mean, I found stuff today yeah <laughs> all right
because I was like, we had this discussion, you're right, John, here, and I, it was, it's, yeah, uh, no answer. So it only came up now. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. take a look at it and, 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 sure you'd say that, yes. and we will make sure the wording is correct for the public. Interest. Well, I mean, that's, <laughs> I think it's the abbreviated version is Sahegan High School because, yeah. you know, to throw in cooperative is, you know, a lot, a lot. It's all a CLE website has us as how he can cooperate with high school. Does, huh? I believe it. I don't know if that's official or. Well, if that is our official name, then it should be official in that. I agree. Yeah. We want to colloquially call it SHS or whatever. I totally, uh, I totally agree with you. But in official documents, it should be called what it actually is. 100% agree. I think that's a, uh, something that we can do, but it's also an example of. Kind of the casualness that we have around here with some things. <laughs> so we'll find we'll find and and, and we'll find it out and we'll uh we'll get it we'll, we'll get it right. And I, I just did my own search and three different names came up for some reason. <laughs> so we'll we'll sort we'll through it, it out. Right. We'll if we all we all know what we'll we're going to say. Yeah, just but legally right. But legally, but legally we'll, we'll get the right. I don't want anybody to come back and say it's the wrong high school you're paying four thirty nine. <laughs> for what it's worth, me word cooperative, most important word of all the words. Probably. Unless there's ambiguity, I think the spirit of the two towns coming together to this endeavor. So, yeah. and that was a throw throwback to when when it was yeah. back when I was seventeen years ago when I was on the Mount Vernon school board, and then we always had the joint meetings with all the SAU boards. Mm -hmm. It was always the Sahegan Cooperative School Board, the Mount Vernon School Board, and the Amherst Middle School Bo School Board. And that's the way I always remembered it. So yeah. I don't know if it's official or not. We'll we'll get the official and make sure they they say the right thing for the warrant. See, the cooperative <laughs> is a legal determination for a district. Right. That right by statute. Like I just looked up like Paulus Brookline is cooperative school district with Paulus Brookline High School. Right. It's common to drop it because as a district, it means everything. But Hollis didn't I, if I'm not mistaken, Hollis didn't start out as a cooperative. Well, um, they got joined by Brookline, uh, Brookline after the fact. So, well, actually, it was formed. It, it was Hollis Area High School because I was there. Was Hollis Area High School, which means it's a tuition agreement. They're not on the board, right? And then it formed the co-op as a board together, right? As a co-op when they ended the area agreement. Area A capital A R E A right. is a distinction as well. Uh, Mass was Milford area. Area of regional education is region. Yeah. Um, but we'll figure it out. Right? <laughs> I'm sure they call it. <laughs> oh, sorry, I apologize for that rabbit hole. <laughs> it's the, the floating one that's been a question has been around for yeah. a little while. All right. Anna's still here. Yeah, I think we still have Anna, right? <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. Excellent. Make a motion to adopt it as presented. Second. All right. We have a motion made by Mr. O'Keefe, a second by Mr. Veyu. Or that. With Scribner's errors, correct? With Scribner with the errors. Other than the distinction from the field, frequently asked questions. Third field. Yeah, the frequently asked questions is just for us to be able to discuss. for that warrant. Yes. Or the motion for the tentative field. Just. And all of the wants all of that. Covered. Well, it's it's like the budget where we yes move we yes. motion to accept the budget and move forward the budget to the Warren article for public hearing. But if you want to do it's two separate motions well, for a tentative agreement and right. the Warren article, yeah. No, I appreciate. It. If you want to do two separate, one to send the one to adopt the tentative agreement, and then to send this, either way is appropriate. Right now we have a motion to send them right That's to accept to accept article and send that warrant article to public hearings so by default at this point we'll be we'll have to have another motion to accept the general terms in principle you cool okay we have a motion we have a second and because we have anna on the phone, we will have to do a roll call vote. Mr. Glover. Um, I appreciate the work gone into this. I think that's probably going to be an acceptable number, particularly given the other changes 
Eric Brooks, so a lovely yes. Hey, you yes. Peter, yes. Grund, yes. And Ms. Zimmerman. All right. Thank you. Okay. So, um, make a motion to yeah. potentially agreed upon it. Yes. Ratify the tender. Yes. Do I want to make the motion that and clarify the words that Mr. Somebody Chamberlain Steve, Steve. Yeah, but there's one other. Oh, of the tenant of agreement. No, it's a woman. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. And the fact sheet. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get that, Danae? Does that make sense? All right. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll make a motion. Make the motion. <laughs> so we need the second. I'll second. Thank you. Um, any other discussion on? Yes. The motion is to um, agree in the spirit of the tentative agreement as presented in the fact sheet. Okay. Thank you. All right. So uh, any other discussion or I'm gonna do a roll call vote? Mr. Glover, roll call vote. Really do appreciate the effort. I don't have any beef with any of the committee here. There are some pieces that I think are missing, however. Glover, no. Mr. Veyu. Hey, yes. Peter, yes. Ron, yes. Ms. Zimmerman. Thank you. Um, all right, so we have a tentative agreement. We've moved it to public hearing. And we'll, and we'll do some editing on the FAQs, including the tax impact. Yep. And I saw last, the least, I think. I think it's a typo. So yep. We'll clean it all up, and we will get on the website as soon as we can. I'd like to send you a final copy. Oh, yeah. Great. Just yeah. for clarification, so this is the only one that, other than the, uh, like, this, the field and... The van that's going to come out of our, the uh, main, yeah, all of them, yeah. There's so this is the only one that's coming forward that's not going to be out of out of the, out of unassigned uh, fund balance. Yeah. Yes, all the rest are coming out of unassigned fund balance. Okay. Got it. And um, did you need for us to vote on this tonight, or did you want us to after, after public hearing? After the public, yeah, because we'll need that for so you can speak at deliberative. Because you, if you want to speak at public hearing, you absolutely can and say what you're feeling about it. I mean, if you had a vote beforehand and you wanted to reveal the vote, you can. Um, or you can wait till after public hearing and make sure that it's you're ready to speak and give your votes at deliberative. Okay, and public hearing is the ninth. Okay. Yes, and it'll be in the theater. Here, here. We'll be in here. we're going to be in here. here. Okay. So at that time, we, we'll also maybe make comments on the budget as a whole and at, on this particular mm -hmm. Warren article. Yep, on all the Warren articles. If, okay. Yeah. What all right. Is the public hearing here? We did it last year here. Now, it had, well, only a couple of years we've done it here. It, it's mostly because we just don't have the people showing up to public hearing and to take up the theater and set it up, but deliberative is absolutely in there. We don't have to hire yeah. extra staff and pay for the only You have 20 people in the theater. It's a more difficult setting. I know. That's always the You don't get a lot. Right. It's, it's yeah, public historically, hearing. I'm told you don't get a lot for public it's hearing. It just takes more of a reduction to set it up. There's more. You, you block it out. You use it. You take it away from from uh, the, the kids and the activities that are happening potentially on that night. And if we don't need the space. Well, we, we we won't use it, and we'll use this, and then uh, but deliberative most definitely will be held in yeah in the theater because there's public input at the beginning and end of the meeting. At public hearing, it's or deliberative. We allow people to speak at the end of each Warren article. Yeah. <laughs> oh. hmm. Okay. Well. Yeah, let me do the show. Or at least that's fine. I suppose. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
So just want to do one last public input section. If there's anyone who wants to speak from the public, and if there's anyone online, because we don't have anyone else in the room unless somebody here would like to speak. All right, two online, no hands up. No hands up. We'll give them just a moment to see if they raise their hand. If not, we're going to be ending the meeting. And there are no hands up, so we can adjourn the meeting. Move to adjourn by Mr. Bayou. Anyone want to second that? Second. Second. All right. Do we really need to vote? <laughs> I don't think you really have to vote on it, do you? No. Okay. We're done.